Ta brudu ita brada sita gabaha ma zegederi anda brudu ita brada ida pahanda ta ma zegederi anda brudu ita brada handa ta ma zegederi anda brudu ita brada sita gabaha ma zeza 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 prada sita gabrundu ida prada sita gabaha Ma zegeteri anda brudu ita brada sita gabaha ma zegeteri anda ta brudu sita brada sita gabaha ma zita hada brudu ida brudu suta gabra de ida bahanda ta ma zegeteri anda brudu suta brada sita gabra de ida bahanda ta gabrudu suta gabaha ma zegeteri anda brada ita brudu ita brada sita gaba handa cha ma zeza 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 zaza zeza zeza zaza parida sita gabrundu ita brada sita gabaha ma zegeteri anda parida suta gabrundu ita brada sita gabaha Ma zeza 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 prada sita gaba handata. We give you praise. We give you glory. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Be magnified, O Lord. Be magnified, O Lord. Be exalted. Be exalted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we give you praise for giving us another opportunity. For giving us a new day, we give you praise, we give you glory. Blessed be your name, blessed be your name, blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. Be magnified. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Glory to God. You are welcome to Apostolic Grace Broadcast this beautiful Monday morning, broadcasting live from the beautiful city of Abuja. You are welcome. Hallelujah. How has it been with you? Uh, how was your week? How was church service yesterday? You know, I have to, I always ask you that. How was church service yesterday? Did you go to church? Amen. If you went, what did the pastor preach about? And what did you get from what the pastor preached? Amen. What did you get from what the pastor preached? I'm sure you were blessed because every time the word of God comes, it comes to bless us. Even though it also comes to convict us unto righteousness, but it also comes to bless us. I hope the word of God bless you. Yesterday, in our church, you know, we've been doing a series on uh, what I call Satan desires you. Yes, uh, Jesus told Peter, he said, Simon, Simon, the devil, he said, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. You know, Satan wants to have us. That's his major desire. And they're not really, let me say this, to you. it's not just, it's not because of us per se, it is because he always wants to bring pain to the heart of God. Now, the devil is pursuing after man, after us, children of God, not because of us, but because, uh, because he wants to revenge. He has an, uh, this deep-seated anger against the Almighty. So he's vetting that anger on humankind, more like uh, a transfer of aggression. And so the devil wants to have us so that he can keep putting pain in the heart of God, so that he can keep hurting what God is doing. So that he can keep hindering what God is doing. So God told um, Simon, he said, Satan, I've asked to sift you like wheat. Just the same way he went to God to, for permission to be able to afflict Job in Job chapter 1. All right. But then I, I said to the church that the major point of attack of the devil, the enemy, is the mind. The mind of man is the battlefield of the enemy. Now, in Romans chapter 7, Paul said that, I want to do good, but I find myself doing bad. And he said also, he said that the flesh is fighting after the spirit, 
the, the spirit the, the spirit also wants to take control of the flesh so there's a conflict and that conflict is in the mind and this is how you will understand the way your mind your mind works simply uh, uh, simple simple illustration this is the way you will know you know how your mind works see your mind as a a decryptor i'm sure you must have seen uh, such thing on exactly on whatsapp you say this conversation is an end-to-end -end. this is uh, this this chat is an end-to-end -end, uh, 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 encryption it means that uh, was that claim that they cannot read your text or listen to your uh, voice note or your uh, video or voice call that's because it is your your conversation is encrypted written in a particular code that others can read except if they have a decryptor that will interpret the code all right for every other person to be able to read this is the way your mind works your mind your body don't understand the language of the spirit because it is foolishness to it all right so when your spirit wants to communicate to your mind for instance your spirit speaks in a code let me use the word code in a spiritual code let me say let me say it this way like for instance your spirit is telling your body you are healed by the stripes of jesus to so your flesh that is an that is a code that the body don't understand you know why because the body is going through pain what the body understand is pain the spirit don't understand pain the spirit understand health divine health divine healing so when your spirit is trying to communicate with your body with your flesh you are healed your flesh don't understand because your flesh is going through pain so how do you understand it your mind now stands as a decryptor to make your body understand what your spirit is saying because your spirit speaks in revelation your body your body speaks in information your spirit don't understand information your spirit understands revelation the revealed word or the revealed truth so your body stands as a decreter between your flesh your body and your spirit and between your spirit and your body now how do you now win the war that is going on in your mind roman chapter romans chapter 2 chapter 12 in the solution verse 2 he said be renewed by the transforming of your mind it means that you should renew your mind daily by the transforming power of the word of god joshua 1 8 this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night and thou shalt have good success thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success so you see for your mind to be able to effectively decrypt in between your spirit and your body is your mind has to understand has to be renewed has to be transformed by the word of god and that's how you can have a beautiful life because what the spirit is telling your body is conflict is conflicting your body don't understand your spirit your spirit don't understand your body so god puts your mind in between like a decreter and a like and like a filter and the devil knows this that's why he wants to bombard your mind with negative things he wants to bombard your mind with negative music negative songs negative movies negative pictures you are online doing your own thing probably studying the bible you know some advertisers just just push some some very funny pictures or videos in advert on your face your, your the devil wants your mind to to register that picture register that video and then your mind keeps playing it over and over again now what that that will do is to knock up the word of god from your heart it is you that will fight the battle over your mind and win
I hope that blessed you. It blessed me too. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, very fast, very briefly, what do I have for you today? What I have for you today is a blessing, a blessing from the heart of a father to his son. In Genesis 49, uh, Jacob called his 12 and said, come to, to, come to me, gather around me. Let me tell you what will happen in the latter day. Let me uh, tell you what will happen in your life after I have gone. Let me tell you your destiny after I have gone. I need God to Joseph. I won't bother about the other ones that he spoke to, uh, the rest of them. But let me just um, hinge my, um, uh, what is he called now? My exhortation this morning on the blessing that came upon Joseph. I will read only verse 25. By the God of your father, who will bless you? By the God of your father, who will help you? And by the Almighty, he will bless you with the blessing of heaven above, blessings lying in the deep beneath, blessings of the breasts and of the womb. You see right there. Now Jacob was saying specifically to Jacob. He said, and the God of your father, who will help you? Now, Jacob could say, could make that statement because himself has received help from God. Being a man who has seen so much trouble, some of them he put upon himself, some of them he brought upon himself, some of them, you know, it happened to him uh, by the course of nature or by um, serving and all of that. He has seen troubles and he has also been helped by the Lord. He has seen God helped him while he tend um, Laban's flock in the cold, in the day, in the night, in the rain, and in, the, in a perfect condition, imperfect condition, terrible conditions. He has gone through life and he has also seen God helping his father Isaac and his grandfather Abraham. He has seen this thing. So he's saying that, look at it, he said the even by the God of thy father. I mean, the God was sure. By the God of my father, whom I serve, whose servant I am, he will help you. Now, it means that Jacob was telling Joseph, your help shall not come from man. Even though God will help, even though God you will use man to help you, but your help will not come from man. Look at Psalm 121. Shall I look up to the hill? Will my help come from the hill or from or whatever place? He said, No, but God is my help. You get my help is in the name of the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. For 20 years, Jacob suffered in the house of Laban, but God helped him. God will help you. Say amen. I declare and I declare upon your life today, the Lord God of heaven, he will help you. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will help you. Look at it. The Bible used one word or also here. It said, who shall help you, help thee, and by the Almighty. Now, this same word, Almighty, appeared in Genesis chapter 17. When God was telling Abraham, he said, I am God Almighty. I am God Almighty. Now, the correct rendering of that word, Almighty, is El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Shad is breast. Shaddai, multiple breasts. So God was telling Abraham, I am El Shaddai or El Shaddaiim. It means that I am God, El, God. I am God with multiple breasts. Some people, you know, some translators start in that place to me, all sufficient God. It says the same thing. Now, because breast satisfies children, satisfies infant, give them nourishment, nourishment, give them vitality, give them strength. Glory to God. So God is saying here, yeah, yeah, just Jacob is referring to what he knew that God did to his grandfather Abraham. He said, by the Almighty, by the El Shaddai, the all sufficient one, he will help you. He will help you. Look at it. Let's read for that. Uh, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above and blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breasts and of the womb. That's why you see my topic today is the uh, blessings of the breast. Blessings of the breast. Let's look at the breast briefly. What do breasts do? The, the female breasts, either of animal or, or, or animals or human. Uh, humans, you know, the breast does two things or three things. It, it nourishes the baby. The breast does not only feed the child. The breast nourishes the baby. 
Amen. Now, the breast gives immunity to the baby. Yes. The breast also helps the, the growth of the mind of the baby. You see right there. So the breast don't just feel the baby. It does not only um, um, stop the baby from crying, all right? But it, it feeds the baby. It, it nourishes the baby. It gives in immunity to the baby. It helps the, the baby's mental growth. You know, that's why, you know, um, gynecologists, or is that what they call them, or pediatricians, those who are in charge of children, they encourage mothers when they go for antenatals to, to breastfeed their infants for at least six months, exclusive breastfeeding. You know why? For, me, for them, for two major regions, for immunity and for the mental growth of the child. Praise God. Hallelujah. So God was saying to Joseph, Jacob was proclaiming this blessing upon Joseph. He said, and of the breasts... What does that say? Nourishment. Immunity. Two kinds of immunity. In terms of health, immunity from satanic attacks. Yes. We have immunity from satanic attack. You know, uh, uh, you know, my, my senior friend, uh, you know, uh, uh, wrote a piece, uh, Reverend Evans Adetokubo Emmanuel, and that piece blessed me. He, you know, he was explaining immunity <laughs> uh, in in Yoruba. You know, they sound the same way. Immunity in Yoruba in, is something like immunity. <laughs> Two languages sounding similar and carrying the same powerful meaning. Now, what is immunity? It means to be preserved against the sicknesses and diseases and all of that. You know, they give injections, they tell you to take a particular kind of drugs or uh, eat a particular kind of food so that you can be preserved from uh, diseases, bacteria, viruses and all of that. Now, immunity, it means that the one, simply translated, the one that cannot be caught. Uh, Immunity, immunity. Somebody that cannot be caught. Somebody can, that cannot be harmed. Somebody that cannot be afflicted. So you see right like that. Uh, so God is saying to uh, jo, uh, the blessing is saying concerning Joseph. He said the blessings of the breast. It means that I will give you. Thank you, Father. God will give you immunity. Thank you, Father. God will give you immunity against every satanic attack, against every attack of the enemy, immunity against every health, health, health every bacteria, every sickness causing bacteria. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will give you immunity, all around immunity, all around immunity. Now look at it. immunity politically uh, is given to governors, presidents, and uh, all those people like that. It means that as long as they are in office, even if they commit a crime, no law can, can, can arrest them. They can't be tried in any court. Why? Because as long as they, uh, they, um, they are in that office, no, they can't be prosecuted, they can't be arrested unless they come out of office. They, they are time and then the law can now begin to take his court. Then people can now sue them and all of that. That's why you cannot sue a governor as in governor so and so. You can only sue his government. I hope I got that right. I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer anyway. I just hope I got that right. Praise God. But I'm talking about Humility, immunity from God. God preserving you from danger. God preserving you from arrows of the enemy. God also preserving your health. Not allowing all these bacteria, all these airborne diseases to, to, afflict, to afflict you. So the blessing of the, of the breast. Number one, immunity. Number, number two, nourishment. Number three, mental alertness. Mental development. Mental capacity. You see, my friend, when you read the scripture, don't just gloss over the scripture. Read in between the lines. What is God saying? What is God? Why would God say blessings of the breast? Does it mean that Joseph will be sucking breast and all of that? Ask questions. What is God saying here? Amen. And look at it also. And of the womb. So God is bringing the blessing of the breast and of the womb to you. What does womb do? Womb carries infant. Carries fetus to development. The womb is an incubator. Alright? The womb also gives life to the, to the fetus. 
Now, in the womb, the child is preserved. Thank you, Father. You see right there. God will preserve you in the name of Jesus Christ. As you go today, I decree and I declare upon your life, God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will preserve you in the name of Jesus Christ. He will watch over you in the name of Jesus Christ. He will not let any harm come to you. Come on, say amen. He will not let any harm, no harm whatsoever, no harm either from man or from demons or devils. He will not let any harm come to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you today as you go. I pray in the name that is above every name, the name Jesus, you are preserved. The help of God is upon you. The grace of God is upon you. The blessings of God is upon you. The blessing from heaven, the blessing from beneath. Now in Genesis 7 from verse 11. He says, in the 600 year of Noah's life, he said the, the windows of heaven were open and, and rain began to pour from heaven. He says the fountains of the great deep was broken open and water was coming from beneath. So that's what the Bible is saying there in Genesis 25, Genesis 49, verse 25. He said the blessing from above. It means the windows of heaven will be open. He said the fountain of, of the great deep will be broken up and the blessing from there will issue out. The two of them will join together to bless you. As you go this way, the the blessing from heaven, the blessing from beneath, they will join hand together in agreement and they will bless you. Say amen. They will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. God is not only going to help you, he's going to help, he's going to bless you. He's going to give you immunity, he's going to give you preservation, he's going to give you nourishment, nourishment in the name of Jesus. You will operate in sound mind this week, sound mind. You will come out with divine ideas, ideas that will bless you, ideas for major breakthroughs, ideas for major breakthroughs in the name of Jesus, as you got today, the help of God is upon you. The help of God is unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the help of God is upon you. The help of God is unto you. In the name that is above every name, the name Jesus. The name Jesus. I pray for you. You are going with power. You are going, you will conquer. You will not be conquered. You are coming with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. You are, see, my friend, believe this and receive it. Say to yourself, constantly consistently. I am help of the Lord. I am blessed of the Lord. I am help of the Lord. I am blessed of the Lord. When you say that, you see the help of God upon you. You see the blessings of God upon you. Receive that help today. Receive that blessing in the name that is above every name, the name Jesus Christ. Before I sign out right now, let me ask you, my friend, to help me share this video all across your social media platform. You know, send the link to your friends. Let them be blessed by God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then if you are not following me on this platform, follow me, you know, like, comment, share, and follow. And also I'm on YouTube. If you are watching me through YouTube right now, uh, if you, and you have not subscribed, subscribe to this channel uh, so that you'll be blessed by uh, the videos I upload and then when I come on live broadcast like this. The Lord God of heaven, he will bless you. The Lord God of heaven, he will bless you. He will take care of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your home is blessed. Your body is blessed. You are blessed. Your business is blessed. Your career is blessed. You are blessed as you go. You are blessed as you come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I commit to the word of his grace, which is able to keep you from falling and to give you an inheritance among the saints. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You will have the peace of God round about. In the name of Jesus Christ, go in this dynamite because the help of God is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not fall. You will not falter. You will not fail. God is with you. Enjoy the blessing. Enjoy a blessed week. God bless you. My name is Emmanuel Adeyomoye. I'll see you again next time, Monday at 5.30 a.m. West African time. Until then, stay blessed and enjoy the blessings of God.